Today, we're gonna rebuild this Honda GX270. The reason we're gonna rebuild this engine is because it has the wrong output shaft. So we're gonna replace it with a crankshaft that is what we need for our application. We're also gonna rip the governor out. We're gonna put new valve springs in it. I got some big plans for this engine, so let's dive in. Okay, so we're gonna start by draining all of the oil and all of the gas. Now for the gas tank, I think I'm just gonna switch this valve off and then unbolt it completely because as you can tell, this tank came off of a different engine. I might change this, I might not, but for now, we're just gonna take it off and not worry about draining it. Next, we're gonna take off the exhaust and the carburetor. After we do that, then we can start digging into some of the internals on this engine. It's also worth noting that the Predator 301 CCs are almost the exact same as the Honda GX270. So if you have one of those engines, this rebuild is gonna be about the same. Not much is gonna be different. A lot of the parts are interchangeable. I actually picked this engine up from my high school, my old high school. This one was just one of the extra ones that they had. Now we get to rebuild it. Okay, now, so to get this carburetor out to separate it from the linkages, we're gonna open this all the way up like this. Push out, that's gonna pop up. Now the carburetor's safe to come out. You know, the carburetor's full of fuel, so don't just, don't just let it drain all over your workbench. Idiot. Now we can start taking off the rocker cover and release our valve springs and take all that stuff out. This top nut is like what locks the bottom nut on so it doesn't back off at all. There's a certain tension that it's supposed to be at, but we'll go over that once we put these back on. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take this front cover off and that'll expose the crankshaft and the camshaft along with the tappets and everything else in the engine. At first glance, this might look a little complicated, but really all it is is a bunch of gears. They just pull right out. The next thing we're gonna do is take off the connecting rod cap. There's a bolt on the top right there and on the bottom, you can't see it. So we're gonna take that off. That way, we'll just be able to slide the crankshaft out this way and it'll all be good. Well, that pretty much does it for this side of the engine. Let's turn it around and see what we got going on over here. So first order of business is we're gonna take this piece off. We're probably gonna have to take something off with the electric start. And then this whole inner piece can come off too. Sound good? Sound good. Next point that we need to do, I think is bust out this nut. My calculations are correct, which, I mean, that's not likely. We might be able to just tippy tap that with a little hammer. So now we're at the point the crankshaft should just slide. Whoa, that's not good. That was a little uh, hot and heavy, but the seal still looks intact, so that's good.
Probably the biggest performance increase we're gonna see for this engine is from removing the governor. What that's gonna do is it's gonna enable our top RPM to be a lot higher than it otherwise would be. How it works is as this spins, that little weight raises up and that pushes on this lever right here. And as this lever goes in, it moves the arm over here, which tells the carburetor to not give it as much fuel. So we're gonna pry that out. Now I have seen some guys go through the trouble to take this whole arm out. Personally, I don't see the reason why you'd wanna do that. Maybe they know something I don't, but I'm leaving it in there. Make sure you take that washer out down there. That's very important. Now that the crankshaft's in, we can start reassembling the engine. This right here is the pickup for the spark plug. Every time this spins around, it sends a signal to let the spark plug know when to fire off. What's crucial here is the distance between this point and this point. An easy way to do this is to take a business card, a business card or a feeler gauge. The specifications call for that to be 0.4 millimeters. These bolts are gonna get torqued to 10 foot-pounds. There's one. There's two. Now when you install your camshaft, it's crucial that you align the timing mark up with the camshaft on the crankshaft. If you don't, your valves will go down at the wrong times and your engine will never run right. What this shaft does here is this helps balance the engine. Smaller engines won't have that shaft, but this one does to keep the vibrations from being too extreme. Make sure that you put your tappets in before you install your camshaft. Now it's time to put our valve springs back in, but with our upgraded ones, we're gonna have to use a valve spring compressor tool because they're a lot harder to compress than the other ones. Now the reason why we're putting new valve springs in is to prevent what's called valve float which is when the tappets don't ride on the camshaft at high RPMs. So we're gonna put these upgraded valve springs in there to help prevent that. This is the valve spring tool from Harbor Freight. The spring goes in here, you crank this down. It compresses it enough so that we can get the keeper onto the stem of the valve. Now, if you're doing this at home, these things are ticking time bombs when they're compressed. You know, one slight move can make these go whoosh and explode everywhere. This is what's called the valve keeper and this keeps the spring connected to the valve, so that every time the valve goes down, it retracts back up when it needs to. Now what's important about this is you wanna make sure the spring sits like in the middle of the tool. See how that's just barely hanging onto that spring? I really don't like that. There's not a lot I can do. Let's try and see if this will work. I stuffed a piece of a bungee cord down inside the spark plug hole, and what this does is it keeps the valve from being able to go back down. So this stays up while we're trying to put the valve spring in. You can see I already got one in. Well, it took some finagling, but I think I finally got this in. If I just compress it a little bit more. There we go. And I should be able to just release it. There it goes. I think that's it. Now we can continue along. I had to take these studs out because these were um, in the way of that tool. Then we can put our push rods in and our rockers. We can button that up. We're almost done here. Now that the valve springs are in, we need to set our valve clearance. Valve clearance is the distance between the bottom of the rocker that contacts the top of the valve. In order to get that measurement, we need to put the engine into top dead center. All that means is we need to rotate the engine until the piston is all the way up at the peak of its compression stroke. And the way that you know that it's at its compression stroke is that after the intake valve opens up and closes, the piston comes back up and that will be your compression stroke. Now this is my feeler gauge again. On the intake valve, it's supposed to be 0.15 millimeters. So as you can see this one, it just barely fits in there. The next size up doesn't fit in. 
So we know that one's good. I had already set that one. So now we're gonna set our exhaust valve, which that one is supposed to be 0.2 millimeters. I'm gonna start by putting that in there. This will get us pretty close. Oh, that's about perfect. That's right what we wanted. With the valve clearances checked, I'm gonna start putting the engine back together, starting with the rocker cover, the spark plug, the carburetor's gonna go back on. We're gonna change the jet on that. Now to replace the fuel jet in this carburetor, we're gonna start by taking off the bowl. There's gonna be a bunch of fuel in here. Yep, you see that's full of fuel right in there. This is our float. This pin slides out like that. Don't lose that. This comes out just like that. Now our needle that we're changing out sits right inside in here. So I'm gonna grab a flathead screwdriver. There it goes. So this is our old one. Our new one just has a slightly bigger hole at the end. You won't be able to tell in the video, but just take my word for it. So that's gonna pump more fuel in there, which is what we want. So that just goes right in there like that. This needle right here sits in this hole right here. This pin should slide right through, right like that. That all looks good to me. Now the bowl cover can go back on. Shouldn't matter which way you have this turned in here. All this is right here is a drain for the fuel. You're gonna make sure that this is tight enough so it doesn't leak. And now we can throw it on the engine. Now the aftermarket air filter is gonna sit on top of this guy right here. And this will get bolted to the carburetor and hold that in. The air filter will just slide right on. Now that the carburetor and the air filter are installed, it's time to put our gas tank back on and hook up the linkages, throw some oil down this thing, and fire it up. The moment of truth. That's not good. Let me double check a couple things. We'll be right back. I pulled the spark plug off and it's indicating that the engine's running a little rich. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and swap the carburetor jets from the upgraded one that we just put in to the stock one that was on it originally and see if that fixes anything. Guys, I'm pulling my head apart, my hair apart, whatever. I can't, for the life of me, I can't figure out what's wrong with this thing. Um, that's all the time I have to work on it. So we're gonna have to end the video there. If you know what's wrong with this thing, let me know down in the comments. I can't figure it out. I, I don't know. In my next video, I'm gonna be doing something pretty spectacular with this engine. So you better stay tuned to check that one out. So, adios.